Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 Marathoner, and I'm super excited today because we've got the all new Nike Invincible version three in for a first impressions review. I've probably done around about three to 4,000 Ks in Nike Invincible shoes, version one and version two. So with version three here, super excited to get this in for that first look. So sit back and relax guys, let's get this video done. Thanks very much for joining us for a, another video. And as always in my videos, we split up into various sections, so feel free to move your mouse around. We'll start about chatting about all of the facts and figures, then we can talk about the likes, the dislikes, and then finally, is it going to be going into my rotation? We'll have a chat about the differences between the two, the outgoing model, and also, the New Balance More V4, sort of the main competitor throughout the video. Right, let's get stuck into the facts and figures. So before we start, yesterday, my lovely girlfriend who's been editing this video ran into the centre of London to Nike to buy their shoes so we could get this video sort of fully tested and out. I've already done 20 miles, 32 Ks in this shoe. But yeah, big thanks to Sarah for going and getting this shoe from the store. And it set us back £169, around about a £10 increase. If you're in Europe, it's gonna be about 180 euros. In the US, about $235. The Nike website is saying a 40 mil stack height at the back and a 31 at the front, giving a nine mil overall drop. In terms of weight, this is coming in at 374 grams from me in my UK size 12, compared to the out outgoing model, very similar, about 370. This is a neutral shoe. In terms of a purpose, it's very much like an easy run shoe, recovery run shoe, or your long run shoe. It's built for doing a lot of easy miles in big comfort, and a lot of that shock absorption from all of this Zoomex foam in the midsole. It's very much a road shoe. There's not an awful lot of grip on the bottom. This has been redesigned slightly, but yeah, you wanna stick on the roads with this one. Maybe some very light trails if they're dry. As I just said, a big Zoomex midsole. The fly knit upper, really nice. Again, very similar to the outgoing model there. And what I would definitely call a max cushion shoe. Max stack height for maximum sort of cushioning and maximum absorption. <laughs> no carbon plate in this shoe. On the outsole, this waffle style. Um, slightly being redesigned at the back here, just to help give that a little bit more movement through the back of the shoe, just to help the shoe grip a little bit better there. There are no different widths available. True to size, yes. I was a little bit unsure when I put it on because the heel counter has been slightly redesigned. My foot didn't quite sit right. We'll come on to that later on. But overall, yes, true to size. Right, let's get stuck into what I'm liking about about the version three. So my first like is the stability. Now with the outgoing model, I particularly found, a lot of people found, when you sort of twist it like this, it just doesn't have much stability. I've got a broken, well, haven't got a broken ankle anymore, it's been fixed, but I'm always really cautious about my ankle, stepping over curves and things. It just didn't have much rigidity in that sort of sideways movement. This is much stiffer side to side, mainly because the midsole is a little bit wider. They've just extended it that way a little bit, a little bit more room in the toe box. And then this heel counter redesign, it's just a bit more sort of stiffer through the back of the shoe as well. A really welcome update. It is very noticeable as you run. It just flows a little bit more in the direction you're going, not as much sideways movement. So a really good update there. My second light has to be that super soft midsole, that Zoom X foam. It's just so good at cushioning. But what you find in this shoe, it's also pretty responsive as well. The type of run I like for this sort of shoe, it's like a fartlek run. You can go out easy, nice and relaxed. And if you want to sort of have a quick turn of speed, it's going to deliver that for you. Yeah, I wouldn't be racing in this shoe, of course. For that sort of easy cruisy shoe that you just want to sort of maybe rock up to a park run and have, give it a blast. It's got enough responsiveness in that, even without the carbon plate, to have a lot of fun with. My third like is these new colorways they've come out with. I really like them. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. I know it doesn't really matter, but you like to sort of look good when you're out running. I particularly like in the footage here, you'll see our new Ben Parks running technical tee. Looks with this shoe. What do you guys think? Well, 
Right, let's move on to chat about the dislikes. And you can't talk about a Nike Invincible shoe without talking about the weight. I think if there's one thing I really would have liked to have changed with the version two, it would have been taking, stripping a little bit of the weight out of that. This one has got a slight weight increase, if anything, very, very slightly, a couple of grams in my size. It's really something you're not gonna notice. That's mainly come from the slightly raised up stack kite. It's still a big shoe, still a heavy shoe, it's still an Invincible. If you didn't like version one and version two for the bulk, you're not gonna like this one either. My second dislike has gotta be the lockdown at the back of the shoe. Now when I got this, when Sarah got home from the shop, I put this on at home, walked around. I was getting quite a lot of slip and I really, then I was thinking, have I got this in a too big a size? Is it not true to size? The size was fine at the front but at the back just getting a lot of slip there. We went out on the run and then I was just getting quite a lot of slip at the back of the shoe. We stopped, adjust the lacing, sort of heel lock lacing at the front, just get a lot better lockdown and it went away completely. It was absolutely fine. So if you do get the shoe and you're suffering a bit of heel slip, I think a lot of people will. For me, the heel lock lacing solved it, but it's gotta be a bit of a negative to start with. Uh, because yeah, it sort of shouldn't really be like that out the box. Heel lock lacing is a really good thing to go to. Do you guys use it? Let us know down in the comments. Really good, especially trail runners. Anything where your shoe might be moving around quite a lot. But overall, quite like the new redesign at the back, once you've got that lacing sorted. The addition to the heel tab here as well. Just looks a lot smarter. Not sure about this shiny graphic on here. Not really to my style. <laughs> This going into my rotation well I bought this in the store so I can't send it back <laughs> firstly but yeah it's fine it's a good solid update is it worth spending 169 of your hard-earned pounds for or should you just go and get a version 2 if you like the Nike should you oh, some hair there <laughs> could you go and buy version 2 or stock up on this definitely I'd say stock up on there if you like this shoe and it worked for you you really don't need to go out and buy this one just yet. And that's what basically I'm going to be doing. If you do are looking for an alternative out there, then there is always the New Balance More V4. It's just not quite as bulky. It's a little bit lighter. Most importantly, a bit cheaper as well, about £140. So if you want to check out my video on this, comparing it to the Nike and also the Hoka Bondi, check that out. We'll link to that down below and at the end of this video. But a really solid option. I have been enjoying using this for my recovery runs. So that's it guys. The full review will be up shortly. This is after 20 miles, about 32K of using this shoe. Hope you found the video useful. Let us know down in the comments, what do you think about it? What do you think of the colorways? Are you gonna be ordering it? Or are you gonna be sticking to version two? Which is probably what I'd recommend for the time being. So I hope you found the video useful guys. Please give it a like and we'll catch up down in the comments. Subscribe if you aren't ready and we'll see you very soon out on the roads getting it done. That's it guys, keep on working hard and we'll see you in the next one.